Hey guys, it's Jenna and Stefan here from Stretch Pilates. And I thought what we'd do today is go over some Pilates for the unstable shoulder. And I thought it was best to use Stefan because he has tight shoulders and he also has a little bit of pain in his bicep tendon attachment. So why don't we go ahead and do a little bit of a flow just to try and challenge the shoulders and make them improve their stability. So we'll go with a roll down. Inhale, chin to chest, please, Stefan. And wait, wait, wait. I would love to try and encourage you to get a sternal depression here in your roll down. So excavate that sternum and then continue to roll through the spine, making sure we're not um, block booking that thoracic spine. Then lean forward for me, please, Steph, and tuck in your chin. That way, we're getting the curve evenly throughout the spine, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. Can you engage your tummy in this position and then carry on leaning forward at the pelvis, curling yourself up to standing, bone by bone, getting integrity in the lower abdominals and unraveling with purpose all the way to standing. Inhale, chin to chest and roll down with the same emphasis on one bone at a time. And then notice how his palms are facing in and we've got a very healthy arrangement of that shoulder. Curl and come back up. Excellent. Last one, inhale and roll down for me. Keeping the hips forward, we're going to start to put weight into the hands. Step your right hand forward for me. And then left hand goes further than the right. Right hand forward and all the way into a push-up position. Now this might be difficult for some, especially if you're in an acute phase of your rehab and you have discomfort at rest. So we wanna try and challenge the shoulder girdle, dropping this um, mid back, but lifting the hips for me, please. Suck in the tummy, and then I want you to slide your shoulder blades down your back and lengthen your spine, and just hang out here. Notice what your elbows are doing. Have you twisted the elbows to face forward? Can the elbows point out with the bony prominences, but the soft inside faces one another? Spend another five, four, three, two, and then push your hips back up into the air and rock back onto your heels for a stretch. And not only are we stretching the back of the body, but I want you to slide your shoulder blades down your back and then twist the shoulder so that the insides of those elbows still face in. And so you're wrapping your shoulder, shoulder blades go wide and you keep your head heavy towards the ground. Let your shoulders slide down your back even more. Thank you. Imagine your arms are like the uprights of a decking or of a bridge or something solid. So you will slide those long, strong arms down your back. Then heave forward for me into the push-up position and hold that stretch. And once again, the hips lift, but the mid-back drops. The collarbones shoot forward and you twist your elbows out to the sides for me so that the inside of the elbow faces the other inside of the elbow. Hold it there for 10, 9, 8, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Heave back onto your heels, and once again, the arms slide down the back, the shoulder blades separate. Wrap your armpits so that you're, you increase the depth of your armpit and lengthen your neck down towards the floor. Expose your bum bones, push your heels down and press all 10 fingers into the floor. Now you get to step your feet forward one at a time. So one foot goes forward, keep your bum up in the air, one foot walks forward, other foot walks forward, walking, 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 and you settle, bend your knees and sit your bottom down on the floor. The feet are going to be on the mat, arms reaching forward for me, please. What I care about here is that your shoulders should be settled on your back and your head needs to be in line with the rest of your spine. Your chin is tucked in slightly and your sternum is pressed back into my hand on your thoracic spine. 
Now the feet are pressed into the floor and your toes don't lift, your heels don't lift and your knees don't move. You're going to excavate your lower abdominals and slowly lower yourself. But at the same time that you're lowering the spine, you're taking the shoulders with you, you're taking the head with you and then you wait here for me. It's like in your tummy, inhale. And then move yourself with your abdominals, not with your head and your face. Keep your head back. What you can do is place a ruler into um, either a heart rate monitor belt. Um, and if, if you're a lady and you've got a bra strap here, you can put the ruler into that position. And then it will encourage your head to stay anchored. Roll back, scooping out the tummy, shoulder blades down your back for me. Thank you, Steph. And then inhale here, which is hard. Keep the head pressed back. And then exhale, tummy, tummy, tummy. Think tummy, not face. And then we wait. Exhale, lower yourself down again. Shoulders down your back. Abdominals engaged. Feet anchored. Inhale. And exhale, you go back up. Float your right leg to tabletop. Float your left leg to tabletop. Squash the legs together. You may use your hands behind your thighs if you need them. But let's do the same thing, just harder. The feet stay still as if on a coffee table. You roll yourself down. We scoop out the tummy. The head goes back. You wait. It's inhale, come up. And exhale, we curl back down, keeping the shoulders down your back. And up you go. We'll do two more, please. Exhale, come down. Inhale, wait. Exhale, up. So you can see now he's starting to use his face to come up. We really need you to keep your head back and think about abdominals without sacrificing everything in the middle of the back. Roll yourself all the way down. And you can rest your head on the floor. Bring your knees into tabletop. Take your hand behind your head, both hands. Sorry. We're going to lift the head and chest up. Press your head into your own hands for me. Sucking in the tummy, this can be done with your feet on the floor if needed, and then lower yourself back down again. Press your head into your hands and come up into a chest lift. Good, keep your chin slightly more tucked in and lower yourself down. Three more, it's exhale. Head back please, again, chin in and lower yourself down. Notice how the elbows are a good four or five fingers off the floor, come up. So we do not want to train with an artificial positioning of the shoulder girdle, come down. What that would look like is squeeze your shoulder blades onto the floor and squeeze your elbows down. That is unacceptable. The shoulder blades are too squashed together. It's not natural and not where we want to be. We want to lift the elbows and separate the shoulder blades. Wait there, lower one foot, lower the other foot. And then keep pressing your head into your hands, sucking in your tummy, you're going to rotate your chest over the right hip, come back to center, rotate over the left, come back to center, go right. And so we're warming up the abdominals, come back, because key to a strong upper body is a strong middle. Last one, center, weight in the middle, and then lower your head and chest. Open those arms out into a T position. You get to squash your legs together, knees and feet squash. The toes lift slightly off the floor and the heels are pressed together. Also the balls of your feet as well, Steph. Inhale, the legs are going to go right, taking your left hip with you. You suck in your tummy. Here we keep the shoulder girdle wide. Can you dislocate the hands and the shoulders out of their sockets? Drag yourself back to center. Keep your sternum heavy in the ground. Inhale, come to me. We're separating the shoulder blades. We care about them. Come back to center. Keep reaching those hands out of your middle. Come back to center. Push your thumbs into the floor, but twist your elbows to shine up to the ceiling so that the bony parts of your elbows are pressed down on the floor. I'm going to lean over you here and press your elbows down, but push your thumbs back. Thank you. Keep going. And can you feel that stretch across your arm, your wingspan? We'll do one more per side, keeping the sternum pressed into the floor. Elbow shining up to the sky. Last one to me. And then come back to center. Good. Right leg goes straight. Left leg goes straight. Arms go over your head. We're doing a roll up. So the arms need to reach quite a lot longer. Still fun. Rib cage down. Good. Find length out of your neck, length out of your toes. I want you to imprint the bones of your low back into the floor. Lift your hands up to the ceiling. Lift your head and your chest and scoop out your tummy. Curl yourself up. 
Okay. We keep the head pressed back. We keep the kidneys seeking the floor. So you're sucking this part in. Now I need your face not to do the movement. Roll down. Head stays back onto that imaginary ruler. The bones of the back lie down. You go over. Good. We do two more. Find that length and that stretch in your latissimus dorsi as your arms are overhead. Reach forward. The kidneys pull back. Your eye line is down, please. More. And then shoulders on your back more squeeze those shoulders down your back and the arms go over your head reach pull the ribs down for me straighten the arms inhale hands go up and exhale you come up great and then we'll lower yourself down we'll finish in seated up you come Good. Cross your ankles and place your hands on the mat and roll over your knees. Good. You're going to step your right foot back behind you. Step your left foot back behind you and stick out your collarbones in this push-up position. Let's lift your hips just a tad. From here, put all of your weight on your left arm and tap your left shoulder with your right hand. Try not move your belly button, go to the other side. Good. So we'll continue to alternate from side to side, sticking out your collarbones, please, lifting your hips slightly, pointing your toes, and alternate. Try to keep that belly button dead in the center. Good. Two more. And last one. Lift, uh, lower your right knee, sorry, to the floor. Take your left knee to the floor. Shove your shins down into the floor. Stick out your hips and glutes. Expose your collarbones. Suck in your tummy. And float your right arm past your right ear. Pressing your shins into the mat. Shove these shins. Feel the contraction in your lower abdominals. Move your right arm out right to the side. All the way past your hips towards the back of the room. Take your hands forward and in front of you again and then lower that arm down to the floor left arm lifts reaching 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 come out wide past me squeeze come back out wide and lower the hand back down we'll do it again right arm reaches goes wide good Dislocate the shoulder, reaching the hand even more. Go wide, dislocate, 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 and pull the shoulder blade down your back, lower your hand. Left arm goes wide. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Dislocate as you come towards me, pressing the scapula out to the side and lower. One more per side. Right hand goes. It reaches, belly button stays in the middle, shins press down. Right hand goes wide, shoulder blade slides, shoulder blade pulls down, and then last one, left arm goes and comes past me. Tighten the triceps, dislocate, dislocate, reaching forward, and lower the hand down. Great, step right foot back behind you, left foot back behind you, point your right foot. We're going to lift up six times. It's exhale, inhale, down, exhale, inhale, down. That right leg's lifting and lowering. The collarbones are facing forward. The hips need to make sure that they are perfectly parallel to the ground. We do the other side. It's exhale, one, and down, two, and down, three, and down. Collarbones, four, and down, five, six, and then bend your right knee in. Bend your left knee in. Take your left arm underneath your right armpit. Reach it far, far, far. Land on the left shoulder using the right hand to pull you back. Stretch your rhomboids. Good. Reaching that left hand, anchoring it on the floor and dragging your body left. Breathe into your side body. One more breath. Press up into four-point kneeling. Take the right hand underneath the left armpit and anchor the shoulder tip on the floor. Push. 
keep your hand anchored on the mat or on the floor as you drag your body to the right hand side. And then relax. Lie down on your back. Lying down on the back, I need your hands to wrap around your rib cage and dig your fingers underneath the sternum and the ribs. I want you to inhale fully into the abdomen such that your diaphragm descends into the abdomen and your fingers get spat out by your diaphragm. In between each breath, you're attempting to open up your own rib cage and pulling apart your sternum. The air bypasses the sternum up here and moves through into the abdomen. Inhale fully in a 360 degree breath around the lower rib cage. So the air is going into the mat, into the sides of your ribs and up towards the ceiling. Your inhale is so deep and so long that your fingers completely spit out of your rib cage. And then you dig them back in and you'll go again. Simultaneous to this inhale and this diaphragm component, you will feel your pelvic floor soften as your diaphragm descends into the tummy so your pelvic floor distends away. This is a good idea to practice this every day for two minutes a day. So I recommend putting a song on and just doing some awareness of your breathing. With a neck and a shoulder, there's often a thoracic diaphragm component. Last one. Good, and then take your right arm overhead and roll onto the right hand side. Straighten out the legs and place your left hand in front of you, palm down. Palm down like this. We do not want the neck to respond to the side body work. So this is where we have to strengthen you here so that you don't use this as much. I want length out the legs, but there is a, uh, a necessity to have a small shortening on the right hand side. We'll co-contract front and back of the body, squeeze the inner thighs together and exhale to lift the legs up off the floor and you'll notice maybe in your own body that your head wants to lift, don't let it. Exhale to lift the legs up and inhale down. Exhale up and lower down. We don't need to do many, we just need to feel um, what it feels like in the body to use the side body in preparation for some of the weight-bearing shoulder stability exercises that are coming. Turn off your neck. Two more. And your last one. Good, now hold it there, keep it there, lift your left arm up towards the ceiling and see, can you stabilize? Can you create integrity all through the body? And it's a nice way to audit yourself and your stability. And then come down with the legs and the arm. Prop your right hand uh, in front of you with your elbow underneath your right shoulder. Bend the knees. Okay? We're bending the knees and we're lifting the hips up. This leg is also bent to start with. Then your left hand reaches up to the ceiling and you're going to push your pelvis forward, forward, forward. Close your rib cage. Get your head in line with that ruler. Dislocate both shoulders out of their sockets, making space between the shoulder blades. Straighten the left leg. Good. We want to challenge this hip muscle and this whole side body, including the muscles around the shoulder on the right hand side. So we lift the left leg up and down. Make sure you're kicking the leg backwards and kick it backwards. Good, close the rib cage, dislocate the shoulders, get long out of both elbows. Yes, three more. Obviously you can add a few more repetitions or come cycle back and do it again. And last one. And now you get to lie down on your stomach. So we lie on the tummy. 
We're going to stretch out that right side. Right arm goes right at an angle, not quite 90 degrees, maybe a little bit higher. And then the left knee bends. The left elbow, sorry, still fine. So the left knee just flexes like so. The left elbow lifts up, hand down. I'm going to just bully him here for a second, lifting the elbow like so. Then we'll take this left foot over the body, the head turns left, and you stretch that right pec muscle. It's aggressive. Be gentle with yourself. Breathe deeply. Because of the nature of this rotation, when you come over, when the arm is at a 60 degree angle, because your body rotates, now it looks like it's at 90 degrees. So if you're not feeling the stretch, it's possible that you need to move your body back, wiggle your fingers till your hand is a little higher, and then come back over. And do you feel the fibers change? Yeah. He does. And then after two more breaths, you go back onto your tummy and we will start you on the other side. So Stefan's turning on his left side facing me. The legs squeeze together and the right hand is settled in front. We squeeze those legs but we get a waistline. We co-contract front and back of the body and we turn off the neck. It's exhale to lift the legs up and inhale to take them down again. Exhale up and inhale down. Good. Keeping that tension in the adductors and realizing that there's a connection between the lower legs in a thigh and the top half of your body's oblique. Two more. Turn off the neck. And your last one, you lift the legs, you keep them there, you take your right hand to the ceiling. Stabilize. Close the rib cage. Do not dump into your low back. Relax your neck. And then on an exhale, you can come down. Good. We're going to move onto, into that plank position on the left elbow. Bend the knees. And we're going to lift the right arm up towards the ceiling and lift the hips up off the floor. The right leg then straightens. Roll that right hip slightly forward. Pull the rib cage close. Dislocate the shoulders, separating the blades. Try have the hand directly on the shoulder. So we don't want to um, create too much internal rotation in the shoulder. Pull it back. Do you see how his shoulder blade slides and glides down the back of the body? Close the rib cage for me. Head is pressed back. You can also perform this against a wall where you have maybe a doorway here. So this foot can bend into the doorway and you've got feedback all the way along. Squash your low back into my hand. Now we lift this leg. This side's quite hard for him. Close the ribs. Lift the hips up, up, up. Close the ribs. Tuck your tail. Okay, keep going, you're doing a good job. Keep the legs straight, dislocate the shoulder blades, wrap it down, close the rib cage, tuck the tail, press your pelvis forward for three, tuck that tail, bottom hip has to press forward for me too, and last one, he gets to lie down on his stomach. The left arm goes higher than 90, Yes, the right elbow's up high, the right knee bends, and over you go, gazing right, head resting. Good. Once again, we've got now a 90 degree bend in the torso and the arm, it's okay. Take a few breaths here, and then we will come back onto the abdomen and move the hand slightly higher. Roll onto your tummy, Steph, and then move your fingertips, walk the hand, yes, and we go back over. And by the look on his face, it's working. <laughs> Breathing. Good, and you can come out of it. At this point in a program, I may even add a small ball or a medicine ball in the abdomen for one or two minutes of deep psoas releases and diaphragm releases. Um, but I'm going to move on to back extensions. Note for yourself, it's really a good idea to make sure that your middle is loose. Um, and so that's a, that is something that I would like you to add in your own um, repertoire 
and, and routine. We're going to take the hands down to the sides of the body, pressing the fingertips into the sides of the thigh. I would like you to look at the shape of his shoulder here. There is a lot of roundness. Even if the spine is not kyphotic, there is rounded shoulders. We need to lift this tip. So I want you to roll the shoulder down your back, roll the shoulder down your back. You keep low with your head and your chest, but you are getting those rotator cuff muscles, the lower trapezius, fired. The hands have to squash into the sides of the thigh. Look how hard it is for the wrists. Squash your wrists, squash your elbows. I know, it's so hard. We go again. We lift up on an inhale, squashing this elbow, squashing this wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go again squashing the wrists squashing the elbows and getting the rotator cuff don't misconstrue height for effective contraction it's not about how high you come roll the shoulder down your back and then rest and we go again one of the most valuable movements and we squash and we squash and you rest one more Stefan and lift elbows wrists and you rest excellent we're going to push you back into a press stretch and we're going to do a glorious side body stretch before we allow you to take a few deep breaths heave up your spine and sit your bottom down with your right leg out that direction and your left leg on the inside of your right thigh so facing forward right leg goes right left leg goes in your right hand turns palm up for me and tries to hook under your Achilles tendon not everyone will have that range you can grab your ankle if needed left arm goes up to the sky and you're going to lean back for me lean back lean back feel the side body it might feel like it's splitting the more you lean back the more effective it'll feel drop your knee good breathe into the side and fix your head and we go over with this hand and back yes rotate the body down towards your right foot now and stretch into the back of your body we rotate to the floor and you get to come up the middle other side left hand hooks underneath the left Achilles tendon right hand goes up to the sky open up the side body roll the shoulder guys roll the shoulder leaning back You need to go get dressed for the rest of the day. <laughs> and there you go. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And come up the middle. Lie down on your back. Good. Relax your arms at your sides. Relax your legs. Straighten them out. He's lucky because he's got me. The rest of you could actually spend some time with a foam roller in the um, nape of your neck. So what I'm going to do here is work on the fascia up into the skull and just try and drag that fascia, trying to reduce the extent of his um, cervical curve. Stefan's going to focus on trying to melt his pectoral muscles and allow the tips of his shoulders to get wide and down onto the floor while breathing into the belly. You can use a foam roller in the nape of your neck or two tennis balls tied together with a sock and you rub up into the suboccipital muscles just below the skull. It's a more of a pulling than a pressing. It's more of a dragging than a pressure. And so what you can do after you've released this fascial component is you can also work on your sternum, pressing down the skin around the bones of the sternum and where the ribs attach to the sternum. Earlier on, we spoke about depressing the rib cage 
in our movements and this will help give you that freedom of movement. Deep breath into your tummy everybody and relax. Take a deep and beautiful breath and as you breathe out you can let all your tension go. Well done.